Excellencies, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, dear friends, uh, let me first thank you for the invitation to discuss uh, the reinforcement of uh, EU economic uh, governance uh, with you here today. During my visit in Dublin, I have uh, already met uh, with uh, political leaders, uh, social partners, uh, the central bank, uh, and uh, I have uh, listened to their views very carefully. And uh, I'm indeed uh, honored uh, to round off uh, my visit here by extending the dialogue uh, to the civil society through the Institute of uh, International and uh, European Affairs. And I want to say that uh, this visit uh, to Dublin is, uh, is very important uh, for me. Of course, I meet uh, Finance Minister Brian Lenihan regularly in Brussels uh, and uh, spend a lot of time talking to Irish colleagues uh, over the phone. But I thought uh, it important uh, to meet here to listen to the views uh, of uh, political leaders and uh, social partners uh, on tackling Ireland's uh, economic uh, and uh, social challenges. I have also wanted to use this opportunity to explain how the Commission supports the Irish economy and uh, Irish citizens uh, to face uh, the current uh, economic uh, challenges. Even though I don't often uh, refer to the country I know best, uh, but uh, I nevertheless uh, want to say that uh, on a personal note, uh, for a Finn it is uh, particularly easy and uh, natural to associate uh, with the Irish uh, people. We both have uh, a rather similar history. Uh, we both have uh, a rather have had a rather difficult uh, eastern neighbor, although of uh, nevertheless different uh, kind. Uh, we became uh, independent uh, almost exactly at the same time, uh, which coincided with a, a civil war. We are both uh, republics uh, with a capital R, and uh, we are both uh, staunch and uh, smart uh, proponents of uh, small states' rights uh, in the European Union. Moreover, we both believe, in, believe that uh, the community method uh, is the best, uh, most uh, legitimate uh, and uh, effective way of uh, taking decisions uh, in the European Union. And I find it very important that uh, small states like uh, Ireland uh, and uh, Finland uh, maintain their strong support uh, for the community method, uh, which makes uh, Europe, uh, the European Union, to work uh, and uh, deliver concrete uh, results. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all are painfully aware, Ireland has uh, suffered uh, a sharp fall in uh, economic uh, output uh, over the last uh, three years and is uh, now undergoing an important uh, structural adjustment. The Irish economy became over-reliant uh, on construction and uh, an oversized uh, financial sector. The fall of uh, inactivity hit the labor market uh, very hard. The knock-on effects uh, on other parts of the economy have also been felt, uh, and uh, the scale of the crisis in Ireland uh, has uh, left uh, no one untouched. We all know that uh, adjustment uh, takes time. It also takes uh, determined and uh, sometimes uh, painful policy decisions uh, it requires uh, political courage uh, and uh, it calls for social and political dialogue. It is by now clear that uh, much of the economic instability in uh, Europe, uh, all over Europe, uh, is not only due to budgetary indiscipline. In other words, uh, in the run-up uh, to the crisis, uh, in the build-up of the, of the financial crisis, uh, Many unsustainable imbalances uh, emerged uh, in the private sector as well. In the case of Ireland uh, in particular, we need to recall that uh, sovereign debt uh, has uh, actually not been at the origin of the crisis. Rather, private debt uh, has become public debt. Uh, the financial sector has misallocated resources in the economy and then stopped working, and therefore it needs uh, reform. 
And indeed, uh, if you look at it from the European perspective, linking it to Ireland, uh, earlier and uh, better surveillance uh, of these uh, imbalances uh, right across the EU could have helped uh, to avoid uh, the worst uh, excesses. However, many of the private sector imbalances, uh, such as uh, excessive credit growth uh, and uh, large current account uh, imbalances, uh, were not at the core of the scrutiny framework uh, used under the EU's uh, existing surveillance uh, arrangements, past and existing, still existing surveillance uh, arrangements. The stability and growth pact, uh, which is uh, say the anchor of uh, the Economic and Monetary Union, was created uh, to ensure that uh, no country would pursue fiscal policy that would uh, endanger the financial and uh, economic stability of the other member states uh, and uh, the euro area as a whole. It has not done that, uh, and uh, mainly so for two reasons. Uh, first, uh, simply because it was not applied as rigorously as uh, intended. Uh, and second, uh, because the Stability and Growth Pact uh, was not broad enough in scope uh, since it left uh, non-fiscal economic uh, imbalances uh, outside the scope of uh, surveillance. Non-fiscal implying broader macroeconomic imbalances uh, related to the private sector and, uh, and the current account. Ireland uh, and also Spain are unfortunate uh, examples uh, of this. And it's indeed uh, important to keep in mind uh, why we have uh, undertaken the exercise of uh, reinforcing uh, economic governance uh, in the European Union. It is because uh, our policy framework uh, failed to prevent uh, unsustainable fiscal and economic uh, developments in many member states, uh, not only in Ireland, uh, with uh, devastating consequences for their economies uh, and uh, with the risk of uh, a financial and economic meltdown of the euro area as a whole. Containing the crisis last year, this year, has been a huge and uh, politically delicate uh, challenge uh, which has required uh, extraordinary actions uh, by the EU, its member states, uh, the European Central Bank uh, and uh, the International Monetary Fund. The reform of uh, EU economic governance uh, must address uh, these uh, shortcomings uh, and uh, system errors, uh, but new rules alone will not be enough. Uh, at the same time, uh, it is essential that uh, the member state governments uh, commit themselves uh, to prudent fiscal policy making and accept that uh, if they deviate from the path, uh, some, from such path, uh, there will be consequences. Uh, this is necessary if we are serious about uh, containing the risks uh, to financial stability, economic stability in the euro area. And we are indeed uh, very serious uh, about uh, this. So, dear friends, uh, let me next uh, briefly outline the core elements uh, of our legislative proposals uh, to reinforce uh, economic uh, governance. Uh, and uh, I will then try to put them into the Irish uh, context. First, uh, we propose to reinforce uh, the stability and uh, growth factor uh, by introducing uh, a concept of uh, prudent uh, fiscal policy making to make the adjustment uh, towards uh, a medium-term uh, budget objective more operational and uh, binding. Debt sustainability will be monitored uh, more closely by setting a numerical benchmark uh, for a satisfactory pace of uh, debt reduction. This implies that uh, member states uh, should not increase uh, government expenditure at a rate that exceeds uh, a cautious assumption about their medium-term growth potential unless uh, they introduce uh, revenue measures uh, that would uh, fund it. And any unexpected uh, revenue surprises uh, would automatically be allocated uh, to debt reduction. The second element of our proposal is to broaden economic uh, surveillance uh, to identify and uh, redress uh, 
macroeconomic imbalances and divergences in competitiveness, which were, in fact, at the root and origin of the, of the crisis in many countries in Europe. The countries with the largest current account deficits and credit growth prior to the crisis have had the worst falls in economic activity and the sharpest budgetary deterioration. To rectify this deficiency in the surveillance framework and supplement the current framework, the second pillar of the reform package aims to prevent and correct this kind of harmful macroeconomic imbalances, which could endanger the proper functioning of the Economic and Monetary Union or damage economic activity in a member state uh, itself. This will be based on a scoreboard uh, of economic and financial indicators. In other words, uh, when unsustainable developments uh, are identified, uh, we will then carry out uh, in-depth uh, country analysis uh, and issue country-specific uh, recommendations. Uh, and uh, this work uh, will have to be closely intertwined uh, with the work of the European Systemic Risk Board, uh, which will start uh, working next uh, January, chaired by the president of the ECB, Jean-Claude Trichet. So in a way, we have uh, these two pillars. Uh, uh, the first pillar is uh, preventive budgetary surveillance. Uh, is aimed at uh, preventing crises uh, like uh, happened in Greece, which was mainly a fiscal crisis. It was also a statistical crisis and uh, economic crisis and uh, unemployment crisis, but uh, it was essentially a fiscal crisis uh, in, in Greece. Meanwhile, the second pillar addressing macroeconomic uh, imbalances uh, is aimed at uh, preemptively preventing such kind of uh, uh, dynamics that uh, led to the crisis uh, for instance, uh, both in Ireland uh, and uh, in Spain. There is the third pillar, which actually is the foundation of the other two pillars, uh, and that is that uh, we need to effectively enforce uh, economic uh, surveillance uh, through the use of uh, appropriate uh, incentives uh, and uh, sanctions uh, to strengthen the credibility of the EU's uh, fiscal framework. This would be introduced uh, at an earlier stage and be gradually tightened unless corrective action is taken by the member state concerned. Very importantly, we also want to make the consequences of bad fiscal behaviour more automatic, <coughs> is semi-automatic, and thus less subject to political deliberation. In principle, there would be an alternative to policy action based on clear rules, that is, market discipline. Unfortunately, market discipline alone is not very effective and can come at very high costs, as Ireland is facing that. As we have seen, markets typically have not restrained excessive borrowing by the governments uh, or the private sectors uh, until it has been too late. And when the markets have reacted, uh, the reactions have been often excessive. This is actually no news to those economists uh, or those uh, citizens uh, who have followed uh, macroeconomic theory since uh, John Maynard Keynes and uh, Hyman Minsky, who proved quite con convincingly that uh, even if uh, say, goods and services markets uh, or the, the labour market uh, works mostly according to the principles of uh, demand and supply, <coughs> according to the normal market principles, uh, the financial markets uh, are inherently more instable and uh, therefore call for effective regulation and uh, supervision. So, ladies and gentlemen, how should we put this into the Irish context? Uh, let me first uh, welcome the announcement uh, last Thursday of a multi-annual strategy of uh, fiscal consolidation that confirmed uh, the commitment uh, to bringing the deficit uh, below 3% uh, of the 
GDP by 2014. I look forward to, to the greater degree of detail over consolidation measures, which the government uh, intends uh, to provide uh, shortly. These uh, medium-term budgetary objectives uh, and uh, their concrete uh, implementation with expenditure ceilings uh, by policy area should become a permanent feature of uh, fiscal policy making in uh, Ireland. There are clear social and uh, economic benefits uh, to better medium-term planning. Detail on the scale of uh, future fiscal plans uh, gives the private sector more information to make uh, investment decisions. It allows uh, public spending bodies uh, to make uh, better plans uh, as they can be more certain of uh, future funding. And greater clarity boosts uh, the credibility of the fiscal chance uh, stance in, uh, in general. Ireland uh, kept uh, debt levels uh, well below the 60% of uh, GDP threshold uh, of the first uh, 10 years of the uh, Economic and Monetary Union. This provided uh, some room for manoeuvre at the, at the beginning of the crisis. Uh, by contrast, uh, some other member states uh, ended a long period uh, of uh, rather benign economic conditions uh, with uh, much higher levels of uh, public debt. Uh, this has contributed uh, to the perception of uh, vulnerability of uh, EU member states uh, since then. Good times uh, were not used uh, for debt reduction, deficit and uh, debt reduction. The most pertinent novelty of uh, our new proposals uh, on economic governance uh, from the Irish perspective is their focus on addressing cumulative and uh, detrimental macroeconomic uh, imbalances. The huge growth uh, in uh, private, private sector credit uh, and uh, house prices uh, in Ireland uh, would have required uh, preemptive and pre preventive uh, policy action much earlier than, than it took place. As we have witnessed, uh, the unwinding of these uh, imbalances uh, has brought an additional burden of adjustment uh, on the citizens, uh, both here in Ireland uh, and uh, in many other parts of uh, Europe. Earlier recommendations uh, by the EU to curb uh, these imbalances uh, could have helped uh, to reduce the worst of the excesses uh, before they occurred. Not only that, uh, it would have called for large financial, financial and budgetary buffers uh, to deal with the tail off uh, in uh, construction related activity when it occurred. That's uh, a further reason why we need to go towards uh, the reforms uh, that have been proposed to address uh, macroeconomic. Uh, imbalances. So, ladies and gentlemen, before concluding and uh, moving from uh, monologue to dialogue and uh, to discussion, let me recall one central feature of the Irish economy, which too often tends to be overlooked uh, in the current climate, uh, which is uh, rather tended uh, towards uh, more negative sentiments. Uh, that is uh, the economic dynamism and relevance uh, of the private sector in uh, Ireland. In the case of Ireland, uh, the principal economic driver continues to be the private sector, particularly exports. The contribution of the private sector of the Irish GDP is uh, no less than close to four-fifths, uh, that's 77.5% uh, uh, in 2009. Ireland uh, has uh, strong economic uh, fundamentals which have uh, delivered uh, economic uh, successes, uh, enhanced uh, economic and social welfare of the citizens of this uh, country. Taking the necessary structural measures uh, to support uh, fiscal adjustment uh, will pay off uh, in the medium to long term for both uh, sustainable growth uh, and uh, job creation. Ladies and gentlemen, I started with a comparison between Ireland and uh, Finland, uh, so let me also conclude uh, with uh, a similar kind of uh, reference. Uh, I believe that uh, the Irish uh, and the Finns uh, 
share a rather similar proverb that was used back home during the 1990s recession, which hit Finland particularly hard. Even the longest night will be followed by a new dawn, Finnish Prime Minister Esko Aho used to say at the time. I'm told that by an Irish friend of mine that the Irish version says the darkest hour is just before the dawn. Quite similar. I might, it might feel a small consolation at uh, tough times like this, uh, but I have no doubt that uh, Ireland uh, too will overcome this crisis. You are smart and stubborn people. Time and again, you have proved uh, you can overcome adversity. And this time, uh, you, not, you do not face the challenges alone. Europe uh, stands by you. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm ready to take questions. Thank you.